For this tutorial, you are going to need a canvas bag that is about nine inches by six inches. This is going to help the bag hold its shape because it is kind of a holy bag. I'm going to be using Bernat Homemaker Deck. It is a size five yarn. Some good substitutes will be listed in the description box. The color I'm going to be using is clay, and if you want to find it, you can go to yarnspirations.com. I'm also going to be using a 5.0 millimeter hook, and you will need two stitch markers. To begin, make a chain of 31. Grab your canvas bag and hold it up to your chain. Your chain should be about a half inch too small for the bag. And the reason is we want it to fit snug over the canvas bag. Now you're going to turn and skip the first chain and single crochet in the second chain from your hook. Then you're going to single crochet in each stitch across. You're going to put one single crochet in every stitch to the end. At the end of this, you should have 30 single crochet. So here I am at the end, and this is going to be the base of my bag, so I'm just going to turn and work down the other side of the foundation chain. So I'm gonna put another single crochet in that last stitch. I'm crocheting over the top of the tail here. Then I'm going to put one single crochet in each stitch so that there are two single crochet in every stitch of the foundation chain. So just continue putting one single crochet in each stitch across so that there are two single crochet sharing the foundation chain. At the end of this, you should have a total of 60 single crochet. So here I am at the last stitch. I'm putting my last single crochet. And this concludes round one. This is what it should look like. There's two single crochet in every stitch of the foundation chain. Now we are going to slip stitch in our first single crochet that we made. If you are familiar with my patterns, you know that that usually indicates where we put our first stitch in our next round. But for this particular pattern, we are going to be breaking the rules a little bit. We are going to ignore that very first stitch and move to the next stitch. We are going to double crochet in the next stitch. No, there is no beginning chain. Now grab a stitch marker. We are going to mark the stitch that we ignored because we are going to be working into it later. So go ahead and mark that very first stitch that we ignored. It's technically the slip stitch from the round before. Now we are going to move to the next stitch. You're going to loosely slip stitch in the next stitch. Make a double crochet in the next stitch. Loosely slip stitch in the next stitch. Double crochet. Loosely slip stitch. You are going to be repeating this pattern all the way around until you reach the stitch marker. Here I am near the end. There's my stitch marker. I've got a double crochet here. So the next stitch 
is a slip stitch. And the very last stitch of this round is going to be a double crochet. Now we are at the stitch that we marked. We are actually going to slip stitch into that stitch. So it's basically a slip stitch on top of a slip stitch. It's going to make sense in a little bit. This is what your piece should look like. This is what makes the texture. It's actually the wrong side of your stitches that will be on the outside of the bag. The right side of your stitches will be on the inside of your bag, and it is going to naturally curl that way. So you're going to want to go ahead and hide this tail right here. Now we are going to move on to the next round. Chain three. This beginning chain three is going to count as a half double crochet and a chain one. Now you are going to skip over the next stitch and half double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one. Skip the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one. Skip the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch. You're just going to continue repeating this stitch pattern all the way around. You're going to want to chain loosely because we're going to be working into those stitches in the next round. So try not to crochet too tightly. Repeat that all the way till you get back to your beginning chain three. So here I am close to the end. I'm doing a half double crochet, a chain one. I'm skipping one, and this will be the last stitch of the round. Make a half double crochet and chain one. Now we are back to our beginning chain. In the second chain, you are going to make a slip stitch. Again, we are going to mark this stitch. So go ahead and mark that slip stitch that you just made. There is no beginning chain for this round. In the very next stitch, we are going to make a double crochet. Now that, if you remember, is our beginning chain three. So that's the third chain of our beginning chain three. It is the chain one space. We are not going to be making the stitch into the space, but rather into the chain one itself. So that is important. We are not going to be making our stitches in the chain spaces. So I'm making a double crochet in the chain one stitch. In the half double crochet here, I'm going to slip stitch. In the next stitch, double crochet. Slip stitch in the next stitch. Make sure you are making your stitches loosely. It's very important in this stitch pattern. Double crochet in the next stitch. Slip stitch in the next. You're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around until you get to the stitch marker. So here I am close to the end. I'm going to make a double crochet, a slip stitch, and in the very last stitch of the round, I'm going to make a double crochet. And in the stitch that I marked, 
I'm going to make another slip stitch. This ends the round. This is what your piece should be looking like. So for the next round, you're going to again chain three. Just like before, the chain three counts as a half double crochet and a chain one space. Skip the next stitch and half double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, half double crochet. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet. So just continue this stitch pattern all the way around until you get to your beginning chain three. So here I am at the end. I've done my last half double here, and I'm going to chain one and skip my last stitch. I'm going to slip stitch into the second chain of my beginning chain three. And again, we're going to mark that stitch. This is what your piece should look like. So as you can see, I'm just repeating the same two rounds over and over. So for this round, I'll ignore this first stitch that I've marked. I'll put a double crochet here, then a slip stitch, a double, a slip stitch, a double, all the way around till I get to the slip stitch, in which case I will slip stitch in the marked stitch to end that round. Then for the next round, I'll repeat the round I just did, which is a half double crochet round. And you're just going to keep alternating these two rounds until you reach the top of the bag here. So, for example, in this bag, as you can see, I repeated those two rounds over and over until I got to the top. And I made sure that my last round was the half double crochet chain one, skip one round. And that is what you want to make sure that you end on. So it doesn't really matter how many rounds you have to do. It's just really important that you end on that half double crochet chain one skip one round. So just do that and I'll meet you at the end. So you see here that I have repeated those two rounds over and over, ending on the half double crochet chain one skip one round. I did a total of 17 rounds. It really doesn't matter how many rounds, just as long as it reaches the top. So I'm going to fasten off here and show you what to do next. So as you can see, the stitch pattern is really nice because it doesn't leave a seam really. So you can make either side, the front or the back, it doesn't really matter. I am going to line up the bag the best that I can, and then I'm going to mark about a half inch in on each side. I'm going to mark this first half double crochet right here. And then I'm going to count over 14, including that one that I marked, and I'm gonna mark that one. So the object is to mark 14 half double crochet. So go ahead and take your canvas bag out and make sure that the bottom is lined up correctly and make sure that it appears to be about the same. It's not gonna be perfect. Now we're going to flip the bag over and look on the inside here. We are actually going to join on the inside of this round at that far right stitch marker. So go ahead and slip stitch to join in the far right stitch marker. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out because it gets on my nerves. So pay attention to where I'm joining here. 
I'm going to slip stitch. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch as well. It doesn't make sense now, but it will later. Now in the next stitch, I'm going to double crochet. Slip stitch in the next stitch. I'm going to double crochet, then slip stitch all the way until I meet the next stitch marker. I am not going to fast forward the flap part because it is difficult. So if you feel like fast forwarding, that's up to you. But a lot of my testers had trouble with the flap, so I'm going to show the flap in its entirety. So here I am at the last mark stitch and it should be a slip stitch. So we started with a slip stitch and we're going to end with a slip stitch. This is what it should look like. There should be 13 of these little raised knots. And it should both be about a quarter to a half inch inside. Now we are going to decrease. So chain one and turn. We are going to decrease by one of the little raised knots. So you're going to slip stitch into the first three stitches in order to do that. So there I decreased by one knot. You're going to chain three. That's going to count as a half double crochet and a chain one space. We're going to skip the next stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet. We're just going to do this all the way across until we reach the last two stitches, in which case we will leave the last two stitches unworked because we are decreasing here. So here you should have 12 half double crochet and 11 chain one spaces. So as you can see, we decreased. And for the next round, we are not going to decrease. So chain one and turn. In our very first stitch, we are going to slip stitch. Double crochet in the next stitch. 
slip stitch in the next double crochet and slip stitch we are going to repeat this all the way across I also want to make sure that you don't forget that beginning chain three, okay? So your last two stitches will be made in that chain one here, which is technically the third chain of our beginning chain from the row before. And then slip stitch into the second chain because that's technically the top of the first half double crochet. It's very important that you don't forget that last stitch there so this is what it should look like if you flip it over you can see the little raised knots you should have a total of 11. so now we're going to decrease chain one and turn we're going to decrease by one knot on each end so in order to do that we are going to slip stitch into the first three stitches now we are going to chain three and again that counts as a half double crochet in a chain one space we're going to skip the next stitch and make a half double crochet in the next stitch chain one skip one half double crochet chain one skip one half double crochet just repeat that all the way across until you get to the very last two stitches we will leave the last two stitches unworked At the end of this row, you should have 10 half double crochet and 9 chain 1 spaces. So that's what it should look like. We decreased right here. So now we're going to go to the next row, chain 1 and turn. We are not going to decrease. Start off by making a slip stitch in the first stitch, double crochet in the next, slip stitch in the next stitch double crochet in the next just continue alternating double crochet and slip stitches all the way across and don't forget that beginning chain three from the row before Your last stitch and your first stitch of these rows should always be a slip stitch so that it makes it look even. If you flip it over, you should have nine of those raised knots. We're going to decrease again, so chain one and turn. We're going to decrease by one whole knot on each end. So you're going to slip stitch into the first three stitches. Chain three, that will count as a half double and a chain one. Skip one, half double crochet, 
chain one, skip one, half double crochet. Repeat that all the way across until you have two stitches left. Leave the remaining two stitches unworked. So here you should have a total of eight half double crochet and seven chain one spaces. Now for the next row, we're going to chain one and turn. Again, we begin and end with a slip stitch. So begin with a slip stitch, then do a double, a slip stitch, a double, all the way across. Make sure you don't forget that beginning chain three from the row before. All right, if you flip it over, you should have a total of seven raised knots. We're going to decrease again. So chain one and turn. Slip stitch into the first three stitches. Chain three, skip the next stitch, half double, chain one, skip one, 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 half double. Leave those last two stitches unworked. For this particular row, you should have six half double crochet and five spaces. We're getting close to being done with our decreases. As you can see, they look about the same on both sides. We're going to chain one and turn. Again, you begin and end with a slip stitch. So slip stitch in the first stitch, then do a double crochet, slip stitch, double, all the way across until you get to the beginning chain three from the row before. If you flip it over, you should have five of those raised knots. And we're going to decrease one more time. So chain one and turn, slip stitch in the first three stitches. Chain three, skip your next stitch half double crochet, chain one, skip one, half double crochet, chain one, skip one, half double crochet. You should have a total of four half double crochet and three chain one spaces. Now we're going to create the point of the flap. So go ahead and chain one and turn, slip stitch into your very first stitch. Skip to the half double crochet. We're going to double crochet two together over those two half double crochets.
Now you're going to skip over the last chain one space and slip stitch into the second chain in order to finish this row. So this is what the point should look like. You should have a slip stitch, a double crochet, and another slip stitch. So now we will fasten off. For this next part, you're going to need to thread 21 beads onto your working yarn. These are eight millimeter beads, but 10 millimeter beads are optimal. But really and truly, both sizes work. I would not go any smaller or bigger than 10 millimeter or eight millimeter. So thread 21 beads onto your working yarn and I'll meet you at the end of that. So I went ahead and put the canvas bag back inside my bag to help hold its shape. I'm going to join in the marked stitch to the far left. So go ahead and slip stitch to join in the marked stitch. Now you're going to chain one and half double crochet in the stitch right here that I'm pointing to. I'm going to be spacing out half double crochet as evenly as I can. It's important to just watch where I put them. It's hard for me to explain. But for every double crochet row, you're going to want to evenly put two. And for every half double crochet row, you're going to want to put one. If you notice, I'm skipping some. If you don't skip some, it will ruffle. By the time you get to the point where that double crochet stitches, you should have 16 half doubles. In the double crochet stitch of the point, we are going to put two half doubles a chain two space and then two more half doubles, all in that double crochet stitch there. This is going to make the point more pronounced. So that's what it should look like. Two half doubles, a chain two space, and two more half doubles. Now we're going to work our way back up the other side of the flap. And you want to try to match the stitches from the opposite side exactly. So watch me carefully. That's exactly what I'm doing here. You should also only have 16 half double crochet on this side. So this is what it should look like. You should have 36 half double crochet and a chain two space at the very tip of the flap. So go ahead and count and make sure that's what you have. Now to make this look a little more even, I'm going to slip stitch down 
two times. This is just to help make it look more even. Now we're going to chain one and turn. You're going to completely ignore those two slip stitches that you just did. Take a bead and put it against your hook. Chain one to secure. Now we are going to skip that very first stitch and go in the third loop. So here's the back loop, here's the front loop, and then here is the third loop of that half double. We're gonna make a half double crochet in that one. Now we're going to take another bead and push it against the hook. Chain one to secure it, skip the next stitch, and make a half double crochet in the third loop of the next stitch. Bring a bead to your hook, chain one to secure it, skip the next stitch, and half double in the third loop only. You're going to continue repeating this stitch pattern all the way until you get to the chain two space at the point of the flap. So I'm not going to verbalize it anymore, just watch me carefully and I will tell you what to do when we get to the chain two space of the flap. So here you will see we are making a half double crochet in the third loop only of the last stitch before the chain two space. So you're going to bring a bead to your hook and chain one like usual, only this time we aren't going to skip any stitches. We're at that chain two space. And at this point you should have 10 of the beads leading up to this point. So make sure you have 10 beads. And in this chain two space we're going to make one half double crochet. You're going to bring a bead to your hook, chain one, and make one more half double crochet in that chain two space. Bring a bead to your hook, chain one to secure it. And then we're not going to skip a stitch. We're gonna go right into that third loop there and make a half double crochet. Now we are going to bring a bead to our hook, chain one to secure it, and now we are gonna start skipping stitches again. Make a half double crochet in the third loop only. Bring a bead to your hook, chain one, skip the next stitch, half double crochet, third loop. So just continue doing this all the way until we reach the body of the bag.
Bring your last bead to your hook. Chain one to secure it. Skip the last stitch there. And we need to secure this so that it doesn't look wonky. So just go ahead and slip stitch down from there. And then we're going to slip stitch one more time where that stitch marker is. This is what it should look like. You're probably going to have to stretch it out and manipulate it just a little bit to get the stitches and the beads to lay correctly. But you should have a total of 21 beads. There should be 10 beads on each side of the flap, and the 11th bead should be in the center at the bottom. Okay, so now we are going to chain one and turn your work. We are going to ignore those two slip stitches that we just made and work our way back up the flap. So our first stitch will be made in the chain one space of this bead right here. We are going to put a half double crochet in every chain one space and in every half double until we get to the point of our flap. So just continue putting one half double crochet in every chain stitch and in every half double until you get to the 11th bead. That should be the very center of our flap point. By the time you get to the beaded chain one space at the point of your flap, you should have 20 half double crochet. So here we are at the point of the flap. Again, you should have 20 half double crochet at this point. We're gonna be working into this chain one space right here. Go ahead and make two half double crochet in that chain one space. Chain two, and make two more half double crochet in that same chain one space. So two half doubles, a chain two space, and two more half doubles should all be in that one stitch. And now we're gonna work our way back up the flap, putting one half double crochet in every half double and in every chain one space until we get to the bag body. So this will be our last half double crochet of this row. And now we are going to slip stitch down two times. This just helps make the flap look more even on each side. So I'm gonna slip stitch one more time. And now we're gonna chain one and turn our work. This will be our last round of our border. You're gonna skip those first two slip stitches and working in the third loop only of all the half double crochet we just made. So again, this is the back loop, this is the front loop, and here is the third loop. I'm going to make one single crochet in the third loop only of every stitch until I get to the chain two space of our point of our flap. 
By the time you reach the point of the flap or the chain two space, you should have 21 single crochet. Okay, so we have single crochet in the third loop only all the way down. You should have 21 of them. Now we're going to work into this chain two space. Make two single crochet, chain two, and make two more single crochet in that chain two space. Now we're gonna work back the other side of the flap. Working in the third loop only again, make one single crochet, in every stitch leading to the bag body. So here we are on our last single crochet, and now I'm just going to slip stitch down two times. You can go ahead and remove your stitch markers, and I'm going to fasten off. So this is what your piece should look like. It should look pretty even. And now I am going to show you how to make fringe to put in the last row of the flap itself. So we're gonna make some fringe and we're also gonna make a beaded tassel to hang off the side here. For the fringe, I'm just gonna use my fingers like I usually do, but if you wanna use a piece of cardboard, I'd say it's probably like three and a half inches to four inches. And you're going to want to wrap your cardboard or your fingers 46 times. This is going to allow you to put one strand of yarn per stitch on the flap, starting at the third stitch down. And I'll show you what I mean here by that in just a minute. They don't have to be perfectly the same size because we're going to trim them. So grab your hook and count down to the third stitch. Put your hook from the back to the front in the third stitch down. And using the Lark's Knot, you're going to secure the fringe. So you're just going to put one piece of fringe in every stitch all the way around, except for the top two stitches of the flap, because you don't want it to get caught in your zipper. You're also going to put a piece of fringe in the chain two space of the point of your flap. So just continue doing that and I'll show you. You're going to count down to the third stitch and stop there. So your last piece of fringe should be right here. So here you can see I've got my fringe attached and I've got it trimmed and I'm going to show you how to make the side tassel. 
So this piece of yarn, I didn't really measure it, but I would guess it to be about 10 inches in length. I folded it in half and I'm using the same method of the Lark's Knot and I'm attaching it to the very top of the border here on the side. And I've got a smaller hook here. I believe it's an E, three and a half millimeter hook. And I'm putting it through the bead because it's just easier this way to kind of grab it and push it to the top. Then you're going to open the tails here. And I also use my fingers for this. I just kind of winged it. I'd say they're probably about, if you had a piece of cardboard, you'd probably want to use about a six inch piece of cardboard. And I wrapped it about 15 times for this side tassel. So I'm just securing it like I do all my beaded tassels. And I'm going to cut another length of yarn, about six inches. And I'm going to wrap it around to secure these tassel tails so they don't go wild about a half inch to an inch down from the bead. Now you're just going to cut the tails so that they're even. And that's it for the beaded tassel. Now the very last step that you are going to want to do is sew this canvas bag to the crochet bag. And the way that I do it is with this clear transparent nylon thread and a regular sewing needle. I'm not the best seamstress, so this hides my poor stitches. So I'm just gonna sew this top round to the zipper lip here in the soft part of the zipper. And then once you do that, you are done. Be sure to check out my written pattern, which includes a version without beads. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.